Vandana Shiva born the 5th of November 1952 is an Indian scholar, environmental activist, food sovereignty advocate and alter globalization author. Shiva currently based in Delhi has authored more than 20 books. She is one of the leaders and board members of the International Forum on Globalization along with Jerry Mander, Edward Goldsmith, Ralph Nader, Jeremy Rifkin et al and a figure of the global solidarity movement known as the Alter Globalization Movement. She has argued for the wisdom of many traditional practices, as is evident from her interview in the book Vedic Ecology by Ranker Prime that draws upon India's Vedic heritage. She is a member of the Scientific Committee of the Fundacion Ideas, Spain's Socialist Party's think tank. She is also a member of the International Organization for a Participatory Society. She received the Right Livelihood Award in 1993, an honor known as an Alternative Nobel Prize. Early life and education Vandana Shiva was born in Dehradun. Her father was a conservator of forests, and her mother was a farmer with a love for nature. She was educated at St. Mary's School in Mainatel, and at the convent of Jesus and Mary, Dehradun. Shiva studied physics at Punjab University in Chandigarh, graduating as a Bachelor of Science in 1972 and a Master of Science in 1974. After that she worked, briefly, at the Baba Atomic Research Centre before moving to Canada to pursue an MA in the Philosophy of Science at the University of Guelph Ontario in 1977, with a thesis entitled, Changes in the Concept of Periodicity of Light. In 1978, she completed and received her PhD in Philosophy at the University of Western Ontario, focusing on philosophy of physics. Her dissertation was titled, Hidden Variables and Locality in Quantum Theory", in which she discussed the mathematical and philosophical implications of hidden variable theories that fall outside of the purview of Bell's theorem. She later went on to interdisciplinary research in science, technology, and environmental policy at the Indian Institute of Science and the Indian Institute of Management in Bangalore. Topic career Vandana Shiva has written and spoken extensively about advances in the fields of agriculture and food. Intellectual property rights, biodiversity, biotechnology, bioethics, and genetic engineering are among the fields where Shiva has fought through activist campaigns. She has assisted grassroots organizations of the Green Movement in Africa, Asia, Latin America, Ireland, Switzerland, and Austria with campaigns against advances in agricultural development via genetic engineering. In 1982, she founded the Research Foundation for Science, Technology and Ecology. This led to the creation of Navdanya in 1991, a national movement to protect the diversity and integrity of living resources, especially native seed, the promotion of organic farming and fair trade. Navdanya, which translates to nine seeds or new gift, is an initiative of the RFSTE to educate farmers of the benefits of maintaining diverse and individualized crops rather than accepting offers from monoculture food producers. The initiative established over 40 seed banks across India to provide regional opportunity for diverse agriculture. In 2004 Shiva started Bija Vidyapith, an international college for sustainable living in Dune Valley, in collaboration with Schumacher College, UK in the area of intellectual property rights and biodiversity. Shiva and her team at the Research Foundation for Science, Technology and Ecology challenged the biopiracy of neem, basmati and wheat. She has served on expert groups of government on biodiversity and IPR legislation. Shiva initiated Navdanya, which translates to Nine Seeds or New Gift, an initiative of the RFSTE to educate farmers of the benefits of maintaining diverse and individualized crops rather than accepting offers from monoculture food producers. The initiative established over 40 seed banks across India to provide regional opportunity for diverse agriculture. Her first book, Staying Alive, 1988, helped redefine perceptions of third world women. In 1990, she wrote a report for the FAO on women and agriculture entitled, Most Farmers in India Are Women. She founded the Gender Unit at the International Centre for Mountain Development in Kathmandu and was a founding board member of the Women's Environment and Development Organisation Shiva also published a book, Making Peace with the Earth to an Australian publisher called Spinifex said to be based on her Sydney Peace Prize lecture made in 2010 regarding Indian social ecological concerns and insights. This book delves into biodiversity and the relationship between communities and nature. 
Accordingly, she aligns the destruction of natural biodiversity with the dismantling of traditional communities, those who understand the language of nature. Although this is a book based on Shiva's homeland, India, the book shows relevance spanning to many other regions where the village becomes a symbol, almost a metaphor for the local in all nations. Shiva has also served as an advisor to governments in India and abroad as well as non governmental organizations, including the International Forum on Globalization, the Women's Environment and Development Organization, and the Third World Network. Shiva chairs the Commission on the Future of Food set up by the region of Tuscany in Italy and is a member of the Scientific Committee which advised former Prime Minister Zapatero of Spain. Shiva is a member of the Steering Committee of the Indian People's Campaign against WTO. She is a councillor of the World Future Council. Shiva serves on Government of India Committees on Organic Farming. Bandana Shiva participated in the Stock Exchange of Visions project in 2007. Activism Vandana Shiva has spent much of her life in the defense and celebration of biodiversity and indigenous knowledge. She has worked to promote biodiversity in agriculture to increase productivity, nutrition, farmers' incomes and it is for this work she was recognized as an «environmental hero» by Time magazine in 2003. Her work on agriculture started in 1984 after the violence in Punjab and the gas leak in Bhopal from Union Carbide's pesticide manufacturing plant. Her studies for the UN University led to the publication of her book The Violence of the Green Revolution. In an interview with David Barsamian, Shiva argues that the seed chemical package promoted by Green Revolution agriculture has depleted fertile soil, destroyed living ecosystems, and negatively impacted people's health. In her work Shiva cites data allegedly demonstrating that today there are over 1400 pesticides that may enter the food system across the world, because only 1% of pesticides sprayed act on the target pest. Vandana Shiva, alongside her sister Dr. Mira Shiva, argues that the health costs of increasing pesticide and fertilizer use range from cancer to kidney failure to heart disease. Seed freedom. Central to Shiva's work is the idea of seed freedom, or the rejection of corporate patents on seeds. She has campaigned against the implementation of the WTO 1994 Trade-Related Intellectual Property Rights Trips Agreement, which broadens the scope of patents to include life forms. Shiva has criticized the agreement as having close ties with the corporate sector and opening the door to further patents on life. Shiva calls the patenting of life biopiracy, and has fought against attempted patents of several indigenous plants, such as basmati. In 2005, Shiva's was one of the three organizations that won a 10-year battle in the European Patent Office against the biopiracy of neem by the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the corporation W.R. Grace. In 1998, Shiva's organization Navdanya began a campaign against the biopiracy of basmati rice by U.S. corporation Ricetech Inc. In 2001, following intensive campaigning, Ricetech lost most of its claims to the patent. <inaudible> Golden rice Shiva strongly opposes golden rice, a breed of rice that has been genetically engineered to biosynthesize beta-carotene, a precursor of vitamin A. It has the potential to assist in alleviating the vitamin A deficiency suffered by a third of preschool-aged children worldwide. Dr. Adrian Dubik says that golden rice is as cheap as other rice and vitamin A deficiency is the greatest reason for blindness and causes 28% of global preschool child mortality. Shiva has claimed that the women of Bengal grow and eat 150 greens which can do the same, though Patrick Moore suggests that most of these 250 million children don't eat much else than a bowl of rice a day. Shiva claims that golden rice is more harmful than beneficial in her explanation of what she calls the golden rice hoax. Unfortunately, vitamin A rice is a hoax, and will bring further dispute to plant genetic engineering where public relations exercises seem to have replaced science in promotion of untested, unproven and unnecessary technology. This is a recipe for creating hunger and malnutrition, not solving it." In the 2013 report, "...the economic power of the golden rice opposition." 
Two economists, Wesseler and Zilberman from Munich University and the University of California at Berkeley respectively calculated that the absence of golden rice in India had caused the loss of over 1.4 million life man years in the previous 10 years. GM, India, and suicides According to Shiva, "...soaring seed prices in India have resulted in many farmers being mired in debt and turning to suicide." The creation of seed monopolies, the destruction of alternatives, the collection of superprofits in the form of royalties, and the increasing vulnerability of monocultures has created a context for debt, suicides, and agrarian distress. According to data from the Indian government, nearly 75% rural debt is due to purchased inputs. Shiva claims that farmers' debt grows as GMO corporations' profits grow. According to Shiva, it is in this systemic sense that GM seeds are those of suicide. However, farmer suicides had begun to grow before the introduction of the GM seeds, and the growth decreased when GM seeds were introduced. International Food Policy Research Institute twice analyzed academic articles and government data and concluded the decrease and that there was no evidence on resurgence of farmer suicides. GM cotton technology has been very effective in India and there have been many other reasons for the suicides. Shiva replied to these assertions that her critics had reduced the issue to GM cottons and ignored the issue of seed monopolies, and that the suicide figures were from the government statistics of the National Bureau of Crime Records. By challenging the neo liberalization of Indian agriculture, Shiva has come up against some of the most powerful multinational companies of the food industry, such as Monsanto and Cargill. In her book, Cargill and the Corporate Hijack of India's Food Agriculture, Shiva examines the manipulations of both the U.S. and Indian governments whom enabled policy shifts which have driven India to become the largest wheat importer in the world, when it already stood as the second largest wheat producer, which would have satiated most of the nation's needs. She also explicates methodologies of food policy decentralization, from government to industry, and expresses how centralization has disproportionately benefited large multinationals without achieving the promised food security and nutritional requirements where Indian farmers adopted biotechnologies en masse. Under globalization, portions of arable land cultivation turn to non-food and or non-staple agricultural production, with increasing access to food export to markets where profit margins can rise. This can lead to the aforementioned restructuring of national import economies. Ecofeminism Ecofeminism opposes the dominant reductionist paradigm in green theorizing and rejects its reformist environmentalism in which environmental problems are solved by the externalization of their costs onto developing countries, thereby presenting the Western model of development and knowledge as the only acceptable model for mankind in modernity. Ecofeminism, part and parcel of radical ecology, addresses possibilities for changing the hegemonic patriarchal paradigm whereby nature and women are conflated and delegitimated as inferior, passive, and non-productive categories, by means of domination and exploitation. Focus is on the work of Vandana Shiva. Here, as ecofeminist activist, Vandana Shiva plays a major role in the global ecofeminist movement. According to her 2004 article Empowering Women, Shiva suggests that a more sustainable and productive approach to agriculture can be achieved through reinstating the system of farming in India that is more centered on engaging women. She advocates against the prevalent patriarchal logic of exclusion claiming that a woman-focused system would change the current system in an extremely positive manner. She believes that ecological destruction and industrial catastrophes threaten daily life, and the maintenance of these problems have become the responsibility of women. Some of the viewpoints held by Vandana Shiva have been criticized as being essentialist by Cecile Jackson. Shiva co wrote the book Ecofeminism in 1993 with German anarchist and radical feminist sociologist Maria Mies. This combined a like and contrasting Western and Southern feminism, with environmental, technological and feminist issues, all incorporated under the term ecofeminism. These theories are combined throughout the book through essays, both new and old, from Shiva and Mize. Although many thought-provoking works can be found in this approximately 300-page book, some also found it lacking new ecofeminist theories and contemporary analysis as well as overall failure to acknowledge the work of others.
Topic: <laughs> Indian Intelligence Bureau investigation. In June 2014, Indian and international media reported that Navdanya and Vandana Shiva were named in a leaked, classified report by India's Intelligence Bureau, which was prepared for the Indian Prime Minister's office. The leaked IB report raises concerns over the foreign funding of Indian NGOs whose campaigning activities, the report claims, are hampering India's growth and development. In its report, the IB said that Indian NGOs, including Navdanya, receive money from foreign donors under the charitable garb of campaigning for human rights or women's equality, but instead use the money for nefarious purposes. These foreign donors lead local NGOs to provide field reports which are used to build a record against India and serve as tools for the strategic foreign policy interests of the Western governments. The IB report states. Topic. Criticism Investigative journalist Michael Spector, in an article in The New Yorker on 25 August 2014 entitled, Seeds of Doubt, raised concerns over a number of Shiva's claims regarding GMOs and some of her campaigning methods. He wrote, Shiva's absolutism about GMOs can lead her in strange directions. In 1999, 10,000 people were killed and millions were left homeless when a cyclone hit India's eastern coastal state of Orissa. When the U.S. government dispatched grain and soy to help feed the desperate victims, Shiva held a news conference in New Delhi and said that the donation was proof that the United States has been using the Orissa victims as guinea pigs for genetically engineered products, although she made no mention about the fact that those same products are approved and consumed in the United States. She also wrote to the international relief agency Oxfam to say that she hoped it wasn't planning to send genetically modified foods to feed the starving survivors. Shiva responded to Michael Spector's article by stating on her web page that Spector was ill-informed in regard to the shipment after Orissa. She also claimed that for the record, ever since I sued Monsanto in 1999 for its illegal BT cotton trials in India, I have received death threats. Concerted PR assault on me for the last two years from Linus, Spectre and an equally vocal Twitter group is a sign that the global outrage against the control over our seed and food, by Monsanto through GMOs, is making the biotech industry panic." David Remnick, the editor of The New Yorker, responded by publishing a letter in The New Yorker, cases of plagiarism have been pointed out against Vandana Shiva. Varendra Nayak has published on her plagiarism involving copying verbatim from a 1996 article in Voice Gopalpur in her 1998 book Stronger Than Steel. Several paragraphs of an article by S. Faisi on the Plachamata, Coca-Cola issue published in The Statesman in 2015 were plagiarized by Vandana Shiva in an article she published a year later. Journalist Keith Clore, in an article published in Discover on 23 October 2014 entitled the rich allure of a peasant champion," revealed that Shiva charges US $40,000 per speaking lecture, plus a business class air ticket from New Delhi. Clore writes, she is often heralded as a tireless defender of the poor, someone who has courageously taken her stand among the peasant farmers of India. Let it be noted, however, that this champion of the downtrodden doesn't exactly live a peasant's lifestyle. Film Vandana Shiva has been interviewed for a number of documentary films including Freedom Ahead, Roshni, One Water, Deconstructing Supper, Is Your Food Safe, The Corporation, Thrive, Dirt. The movie, and this is what democracy looks like, a documentary about the Seattle WTO protests of 1999, Shiva's focus on water has caused her to appear in a number of films on this topic. These films include, Ganga from the Ground Up. A documentary on water issues in the River Ganges, Blue Gold, World Water Wars by Sam Bazo, Irena Salina's documentary Flow, For Love of Water in competition at the 2008 Sundance Film Festival, and the PBS Now documentary on Thin Ice. On the topic of genetically modified crops, she was featured in the documentary Fed Up, 2002, on genetic engineering, industrial agriculture and sustainable alternatives, and the documentary The World According to Monsanto, a film made by the French independent journalist Marie-Monique Robin. 
Shiva appeared in a documentary film about the Dalai Lama, entitled Dalai Lama Renaissance. In 2010, Shiva was interviewed in a documentary about honeybees and colony collapse disorder, entitled Queen of the Sun. She appears in the French movie Domaine. Topic: <laughs> Selected listing. Seeds of Death: Unveiling the Lies of GMOs, 2012. Another Story of Progress, 2012 The Farmer and His Prince, 2013 Creating Freedom, The Lottery of Birth, 2013 Poverty Inc. 2014 The True Cost, 2015, a documentary about fast fashion and the garment industry Topic. Publications 1981, Social Economic and Ecological Impact of Social Forestry in Kohler, Vandana Shiva, H. C. Sharachandra, J. Banyapadhyay, Indian Institute of Management Bangalore 1986, Chipko, India's Civilizational Response to the Forest Crisis, J. Bandopadi and Vandana Shiva, Indian National Trust for Art and Cultural Heritage. Pub, by INTACH 1987, The Chipko Movement Against Limestone Quarrying in Dune Valley, J. Bandopadi and Vandana Shiva, Lokayan Bulletin, 5-3, 1987, pp. 19-25 online 1988, Staying Alive, Women, Ecology and Survival in India, Z Press, New Delhi, ISBN 0-86232-823-3-1989, The Violence of the Green Revolution, Ecological Degradation and Political Conflict in Punjab, Natraj Publishers, New Delhi, ISBN 0-86232-964-7 HB, ISBN 0-86232-965, 5 PB 1991, Ecology and the Politics of Survival, Conflicts over Natural Resources in India, Sage Publications, Thousand Oaks, California, ISBN 0-8039-9672-1-1992, Biodiversity, Social and Ecological Perspectives Editor, Z Press, United Kingdom 1993 Women, Ecology and Health, Rebuilding Connections Editor, Dag Hammarskjöld Foundation and Cali for Women, New Delhi 1993, Monocultures of the Mind, Biodiversity, Biotechnology and Agriculture, Z Press, New Delhi 1993 Ecofeminism, Maria Mize and Vandana Shiva, Fernwood Publications, Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada, ISBN 1-895686-28-8-1994, Close to Home, Women Reconnect Ecology, Health and Development Worldwide, Earth Scan, London, ISBN 0-86571-264-6-1995, Five, Biopolitics with Ingen Moser, Z Books, United Kingdom 1997, Biopiracy, The Plunder of Nature and Knowledge, South End Press, Cambridge, Massachusetts, IISBN 1-896357-11-3-2000, Stolen Harvest, The Hijacking of the Global Food Supply, South End Press, Cambridge, Massachusetts, ISBN 0-89608-608-9-2000, Tomorrow's Biodiversity, Thames and Hudson, London, ISBN ISBN 0-500-28239-0-2001 Patents, Myths and Reality, Penguin India 2002, Water Wars, Privatization, Pollution, and Profit, South End Press, Cambridge, Massachusetts 2005, India Divided, Seven Stories Press, 2005, Globalization's New Wars, Seed, Water and Life Forms Women Unlimited, New Delhi, ISBN 81-88965-17-0-2005, Earth Democracy, Justice, Sustainability Sustainability, and Peace, South End Press, ISBN 0-89608-745-X2007, Manifestos on the Future of Food and Seed, Editor, South End Press ISBN 978-0-89608-777-4-2007, Democratizing Biology, Reinventing Biology from a Feminist, Ecological and Third World Perspective, Author, Paradigm Publishers ISBN 978-1-59451-2. 
9-2007, Cargill and the Corporate Hijack of India's Food and Agriculture, Navdanya, RFSTE, New Delhi 2008, Soil Not Oil, South End Press ISBN 978-0-89608-782-8-2010, Staying Alive, South End Press ISBN 978-0-89608-793-4-2011-0. Piracy, the Plunder of Nature and Knowledge, Natraj Publishers, ISBN 978-8-18158-160-0-2011, Monocultures of the Mind, Perspectives on Biodiversity, Natraj Publishers, ISBN 978-8-18158-151-8-2013, Making Peace with the Earth Pluto Press ISBN 978-0-7453-33762. See also Biopiracy Green Revolution in India Science and Technology Studies in India